Well, I was at uh, BRE from 1966 to 1980 doing research that I really wanted to do and one of the major areas of studying real structures was making measurements on deep excavations uh, and the movements that took place around them. And we'd published on that subject and it had been, become known that I had developed an expertise in that area. And then one day I was approached by um, a consultant who was involved in the design of the underground car park at the Palace of Westminster. And there were huge concern there because uh, this very deep car park, one of the deepest excavations in London at the time, um, was within uh, two and a half metres of the Westminster Hall and uh, ten metres of the Big Ben clock tower. So there was huge concern about about the impacts. Uh, and I was asked if I would advise, advise on uh, one, the site investigation that needed to be carried out, and two, the sort of calculations that could be done to assess the impacts. Um, first of all, the site investigation was seminal because uh, one of the things I learned in South Africa uh, and very early on in my practical work, uh, and going right back to Tzaghi, you have to know what is there. And to know what is there, you've got to look at it and you've got to handle it. And at the New Palace Yard car park, I insisted that continuous sampling was carried out. Every single sample was split. I split them and personally described them and handled them. And found to my dismay that at a, at a depth of 18 metres, which is the bottom of the excavation, there was a layer of London clay, 10 metres thick, with thin partings of silt and sand uh, every five centimetres or so uh, within the London clay. The water pressures in the ground were very high, they were in equilibrium with the River Thames, and to dig a great big hole, take off a lot of stress, uh, overlying these silt and sand partings with high water pressures in them, with ready access to flow into them, would have been very dangerous indeed. In fact, it's said that I would have succeeded uh, where Guy Fawkes failed in demolishing the Palace of Westminster. It would have simply blown the bottom out of the excavation. And that single finding determined the whole design. It dictated the whole design. So it's a, a classic example of no matter how much laboratory testing you do, unless you have actually examined the ground, you don't really know what is there. So that's always been at the heart of my lectures and, and, and it's kind of become embedded now in, in folklore to how important this process of description is. Uh, so that was one of the activities. The other one was predicting movements. We had to make predictions on the clock tower and our rather simple linear elastic uh, program told us that the Big Ben clock tower uh, would tilt away from the excavation by about one in uh, 6,000. When we began to make measurements, to our dismay, the clock tower actually, rather than moving away from the excavation, tilted towards it. It tilted by less than we predicted. It actually tilted by one in 7,000. Uh, but we got the direction wrong by 180 degrees. In fact, it didn't have huge, it wasn't dangerous, but it was one of these little conundrums that we had, we had to answer the question why. Uh, and eventually we concluded that uh, the reason for it was that uh, we hadn't accounted for non-linear behaviour of the ground. And that single finding actually generated a whole new area of work. It, it brought out the importance of understanding the effects of non-linear behaviour on soil structure interaction and the precise form of movements that you get outside the excavation. So it had huge spin-off. As always, you get involved in a practical problem and it throws up questions that need answers and need research.